Hey, this is the third time I'm recording this intro, believe it or not. Yeah, the first time I looked like death warmed over. Why? Well, last night met up with an ex coworker, had a couple beers out, got home, lit the bonfire, which is a cool bonfire. I'm gonna have to show you guys this because this thing's amazing. But anywho, uh, had a couple beers around the bonfire, stayed up too late. You know how it is. I looked like hell in that first uh, one. And then, hey, I just started another one and I forgot to hit record. I uh, am having a great day. I finished painting today. It's multi-staged painting. Did it over four sittings, probably two weeks or so. Finished that one up today. This video is actually gonna be the time lapse of that. Uh, it's one of my monolithic uh, painting series. And I've talked about that in a f previous one. I'll try to remember to put a little uh, little info card up here for you guys to check that out if you are interested. Today, I don't want to talk about what I'm painting or how I'm painting it. I want to talk about painting series or, you know, doing anything creatively in a series, really. I mean, music, same way, writing, poetry, you name it do series, get some cohesive things, and here are my thoughts. So I hope you enjoy. Welcome to the voiceover. I'm painting another monolith painting. Uh, I'm now kind of starting to think of them as guardians. I'm not sure. Uh, but they're definitely these, these entities that um, have this ancient vibe, you know, the seven wonders, and I'm really intrigued with them, and again, I, I did a video a while back about these, and about Giacometti, Albert Giacometti that is, who did these kind of bronze cast things that these kind of are based off of, however, uh, they're starting to evolve, and they're starting to get a life of their own, and getting a little bit further away from uh, Mr. Giacometti, uh, who's one of my favorite artists, by the way. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, why it is important to do paintings in series. And when I say series, I'm not saying you have to just pound out painting after painting after painting on just one subject, like these monolith uh, paintings. But doing series to um, show any grouping, it's kind of like, like uh, you know, a body of work, you know, a cohesive grouping of similar types of things. So a viewer, like say you're having a show, so a viewer knows that it's one artist, not ten artists, you know. And this is something that happens in music all the time, too. I mean, an album, you know, some of you younger kids uh, may not remember getting an album and listening it to front to back and having this cohesive work. It's kind of the same mentality where you really want to build your visual language so the viewer of them, you know, will kind of get a just of a bigger, broader meaning from, from your art. And granted, art's gonna scatter to the four corners of the world, hopefully, uh, and most people will probably see them as one-offs. But if you keep a online gallery to show certain works in the same kind of context, you will definitely broaden their, their horizons in understanding what you so choose to do. Uh, you know, one of the <laughs> biggest series masters in the history of art would be our friend uh, Mr. Warhol. Andy um, bounced around for a bit, did the, his graphic stuff, you know, and did his pop art, that early stuff, which was comic book stuff, kind of like. 
Roy Lichtenstein. He kind of stumbled along for a long time, and then all of a sudden, I mean, and he was he was making money, but all of a sudden, on uh, the suggestion of his art dealer in California, he did a big series of the sam uh, the now famous uh, Campbell's soup cans, and they were the most basic versions, one after another, of all what is it, 48 flavors that they had back in the uh, 60s? I can't remember. Uh, maybe it was 24, I think it was 48, and filled up a room. It was amazing. Critics didn't know what to think, but he took that and he took that series and then pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and, pushed it and came back to it. The other thing, and that's what I'm getting at here, uh, doing a series is not doing the same painting every time. It is pushing and pulling and playing around with all of the things that you're thinking of when you're painting. It's the evolution of work. Here I'm gonna go back to music on this one. The evolution of music. Pink Floyd, all their albums are very cohesive. But if you're looking back at Pink Floyd, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, to the later versions, there's very different things going on from Uma Guma to Wish You Were Here to Dark Side of the Moon to On the Turning of the Way. Very different, but it's the same stuff. They're playing with the same kind of concepts, same thing. By working the same themes, but pushing them, thinking differently about them, you enhance your art, you get better at it. You know, again with Andy, look at where his Marilyn's went. He did hundreds, not, I don't know how many he did, hundreds and hundreds of them. And each one was unique, and they pushed and pushed. Uh, Here's another artist for you, uh, might not be on your radar. If not, check him out, Jim Dine. Jim Dine is amazing. He's kind of introverted. He's probably best known for um, his tool series, bathrobes, owls. I'm gonna pop some up here and you will see, uh, and, and hearts for that matter, and you'll see a progression of colors and playing and, and all that good stuff. And this is why playing around in series is important. You can really, really extend a theme concept. Maybe somebody doesn't like XYZ painting, who cares? They kind of like the concept, but they don't like that one, or, or three, four, five of them. Maybe you get one that just hits the nail on them, and all of a sudden you have a fan, and maybe because now they like that one, or maybe even buy one from you, and they're like, hey, I really like this. Then maybe they start liking other ones, and they're like, hey, can you do one for me? It's a way to broaden your visual library, visual history, the history of making something. Um, it's also very important because you grow as an artist, and, and, and that's what art's all about. It's growing, it's growing, growing, growing. hope with these uh, monoliths are to have a, a gallery show or a small show somewhere um, and show them as a collective. Um, but I have been making them also because people seem to like them. I've, I've sold quite a few of these now and um, I'm hoping to, to sell some more. So don't be afraid. Let me know if you want one. You think something's working, something's not. I'd love to hear uh, what you guys do in series. And, and this also works for, you know, any other thing, photography. Uh, you know, even vlogging, all of that. You know, the more you do, you do your series, people are coming back for more. You may have noticed um, somebody came coming in showing me a painting that I just wanted to do a shout out to my love of my life, uh, Tracy. Uh, she is uh, getting into getting into some uh, watercolors, which is inspiring me to 
try it too, but uh, I have a feeling she's gonna be a lot better than me as she uh, works on being tenacious about that. I hope you like this video. I hope you like that painting. Um, it's a kind of cool one. I used a reference from uh, Hawaii actually on that one that I took. Uh, there's a video about uh, references and uh, your creative library. Check that one out too if you like. It's a pretty good one. Um, Plus, there's a lot of scenery from Hawaii there. <laughs> but uh, if you like this video, please uh, subscribe, like, do all the things. I really appreciate it. It really helps me out um, and all that stuff. I hope you are inspired to do uh, more uh, series type work. And I would love to see if you do. And let me know if you do, what kind of things you do, and all that good stuff. All right? We'll see you in the next video.